It has been almost 20 years since it was reported that some Neanderthals had red hair. You might have heard this was overturned, but nothing is further from the truth. Over the past 20 years, new genetic discoveries have quietly begun to update the image of the Neanderthal. The southern Neanderthal populations, living from the Mediterranean basin through Iberia, carried genetic signals that point toward lighter pigmentation, including hair and eye colors far more varied than once thought. Their genomes show signs of depigmentation, including mutations in the MC1R gene that reduce melanin production, and their anatomy, especially their extraordinarily large eye sockets, suggests a visual system capable of producing irises that appear far lighter than predicted by simplified genetic models. Even more surprising, DNA analyses now reveal that Iberian and Italian Neanderthals cluster genetically not with the classic heavy-browed Neanderthals of France and Germany, but rather with populations from the eastern Mediterranean. This unexpected connection between the Mediterranean Neanderthals and their Near Eastern relatives raises the possibility that lighter pigmentation was not an isolated Iberian phenomenon at all, but a deeper, older feature of a widespread southern Neanderthal lineage. The evidence for lighter pigmentation in Mediterranean Neanderthals begins with the individuals from Iberia's El Cidron cave. Among the sequenced individuals is at least one female who carried a unique MC1R mutation known as R307G. Experimental tests of this gene showed that it functions similarly to the MC1R variants responsible for red and blonde hair, pale skin, and lightly pigmented irises in modern humans. In modern populations, loss of function MC1R mutations tend to reduce eumelanin production dramatically allowing more pheomelanin and structurally scattered light to dominate the visual appearance of hair, skin, and eyes. A Neanderthal carrying the R307G mutation would not have had very dark eyes or very dark skin. Instead, the individual likely had pale or medium skin and hair shades ranging from reddish to blondish tones. Crucially, while the classic modern blue eye mutation from the HERC2 gene is absent in all known Neanderthals, Eye color is not determined solely by that allele. The combination of a depigmenting MC1R variant and large light-gathering Neanderthal irises would have produced eyes that appear lighter, clearer, and more reflective than the average brown-eyed Homo sapiens. The Montelicini Neanderthal from Italy presents the same mutation, R307G indicating that pale skin and red or blonde hair were not restricted to isolated Iberian pockets. Instead, this trait appears repeatedly in southern European Neanderthals, suggesting a regional pattern of lighter pigmentation. The presence of the same rare mutation in both Iberia and Italy points to shared ancestry and gene flow linking these populations. Such pigmentation genes do not randomly spread across vast territories unless populations are connected. These individuals lived hundreds of kilometers apart, yet the same pigmentation signature links them. The simplest explanation is that Iberia and Italy shared a common Neanderthal population history, and that this history ultimately originates farther to the east. Pigmentation, however, is influenced by more than just genetics. Neanderthals had remarkably large eye sockets, often 20% larger in volume than those of modern humans. Larger orbits require larger eyeballs, and larger eyes gather more light. This difference alone changes the way irises appear. A large iris spreads pigment over a broader surface, reducing the apparent density of melanin. Even a brown iris in a Neanderthal would have appeared lighter, warmer, or more golden than the same genetic shade in a modern human. In addition, the stroma, the collagen-rich layer in the front of the iris, plays an essential role in structural coloration. Blue, grey, green and hazel eyes result from the interaction of stromal scattering and melanin concentration. If Neanderthals had different stromal architecture, different hydration levels or different collagen spacing, their irises would scatter light in unique ways. Combined with reduced melanin from MC1R variants, Large Neanderthal eyes could easily display hazel, amber, greenish, or even greyish tones. 
although these tones would not be identical to the classic modern northern European sky blue, they could be pale enough that a modern observer might describe them as blue or blue-grey. To understand why these traits appear in Iberia and Italy, but not in northern or eastern Europe, we must look at Neanderthal population structure. Genetic studies over the last decade have repeatedly shown that western and southern Neanderthals, those from Iberia, Italy, the Balkans and the Caucasus, cluster together genetically and trace a large portion of their ancestry to populations from the eastern Mediterranean. Meanwhile, the Neanderthals from France, Belgium and Germany form a separate northern cluster that experience repeated population bottlenecks and replacements during glacial cycles. The Mediterranean Neanderthals represent a stable southern lineage, one that stretches geographically from Iberia to Italy to the Near East. When climate allowed, corridors through Anatolia, the Balkans and the Mediterranean coast connected these regions, facilitating gene flow. The northern Neanderthals, living in harsher climates and more isolated landscapes, followed a different evolutionary path. This means that when we compare El Cidron or Monte Lucini to French or German Neanderthals, we are not comparing local variants of a single European population, but rather representatives of two different Neanderthal worlds. This genetic alignment between southern Europe and the eastern Mediterranean has profound implications for pigmentation. If Iberian and Italian Neanderthals carried depigmenting MC1R variants, and if these populations descend from eastern Mediterranean Neanderthals, then it becomes likely that the eastern Mediterranean Neanderthals also carried such variants. The eastern Mediterranean, especially during the warm phases, was a region of intense Neanderthal occupation. The fossils from Tabun, Kebara, Shanida and Amud show individuals with robust anatomy and cranial features that match the southern European lineage rather than the northern one. The eastern Mediterranean Neanderthals were part of the same population system that produced the Iberian and Italian Neanderthals with lighter pigmentation. Although DNA preservation has prevented sequencing of a complete genome from the eastern Mediterranean, the cultural, fossil and genetic continuity strongly suggests they were ancestral to, or at least closely related to, the populations of Iberia and Italy. An interesting question in bringing a Neanderthal to life is skin colour. Now this would probably have varied Neanderthal to Neanderthal, but DNA samples of Neanderthal specimens from modern Europe found that those individuals probably had pale skin and some possibly even red hair. Given this relationship and given the shared MC1R mutations between Iberia and Italy, the most parsimonious explanation is that the eastern Mediterranean Neanderthals possessed similar pigmentation variants. If the mutation existed in Italy and Iberia, separated by the entire Mediterranean basin, it almost certainly existed in the eastern source populations from which those groups descended. Cultural evidence further strengthens this connection. The Musterian stone industries of Iberia and Italy resemble those of the eastern Mediterranean more closely than those of northern Europe. The Levallois technique, blade production styles and hunting strategies show parallels between the Mediterranean and Near Eastern regions. Ochre use, shell pigmenting and early symbolic behaviours observed in Iberia and Italy also appear in eastern Mediterranean sites, suggesting a shared cultural substrate. These parallels reflect population contact and continuity, not independent invention. When culture, anatomy and genetics all point in the same direction, the conclusion becomes unavoidable. Southern European Neanderthals were an extension of an eastern Mediterranean lineage, not offshoots of northern European groups. This intertwined relationship suggests a re-evaluation of Neanderthal appearance. Instead of imagining Mediterranean Neanderthals as dark-featured, we must picture individuals whose appearance was shaped by a combination of lighter pigmentation genes, large and scattering rich eyes, and the warm climates of interglacial periods. The El Cidron female, with her MC1R mutation, likely had had fair skin and reddish-brown hair, while her eyes, despite lacking the modern blue-eye allele, could easily have been hazel, greenish, or grey. The Monte Lucini individual, carrying the same mutation, would have looked similar. Even individuals without the MC1R variant 
would not necessarily have had dark eyes. The iris architecture of Neanderthals alone could lighten the appearance of brown eyes, making them golden, honey-coloured or amber. Meanwhile, Eastern Mediterranean Neanderthals, genetically connected to these groups, would have exhibited similar traits, meaning that light pigmentation was not a regional oddity, but a characteristic of a widespread southern population. This interpretation also explains why pigmentation variation in Neanderthals seems uneven across Europe. Northern Neanderthals were repeatedly pushed into refugia during harsh glacial phases. These populations experienced bottlenecks that reduced genetic diversity and favoured alleles suited to cold, dark climates. Meanwhile, the southern Neanderthal lineage experienced more continuous occupation of temperate regions, enabling them to retain or develop pigmentation variants that lighten skin and hair. The southern lineage's expansion into Italy and Iberia brought these traits westward. Thus, the light-pigmented Neanderthals from Iberia and Italy are not anomalies. They are clues to a broader, older pattern that originated in the eastern Mediterranean. The emerging picture is that Neanderthals were not a uniformly dark, cold-adapted species. They were a diverse, regionally structured population with distinct histories. The Mediterranean and Eastern Mediterranean Neanderthals likely had lighter pigmentation and more eye-color variation than their northern counterparts. Their faces would have been framed by lighter hair, and their large, scattering-rich eyes would have shone with hues that modern humans would describe as hazel, green, amber, or even grey-blue. These traits were not adopted from modern humans. They belonged to the Neanderthals themselves, inherited through a lineage that stretched from the caves of the eastern Mediterranean across the Italian peninsula and into the forests of Iberia. Far from being homogeneous, Neanderthals were a vibrant, varied species whose appearance reflected the complexity of their migrations, adaptations, and evolutionary history. Thanks for watching.